expected. It gave me hope, but I'd say, and I didn't have a lot of that as a kid. It used to make me feel, wow, and give me all these opportunities, but then all that wore off and I didn't appreciate the more important things like my family. I'll never say I'm stepping away for good. It might do me some good to get myself recharged mentally and physically. I'm not silly. I've got a mortgage to pay for and kids to feed. I've got a few months to sit back and decide. I might have to go and get a job digging holes and I'm happy with that. Uh, now I want to enjoy the little things in life. I used to think I was living life when I was out in a bar at four in the morning. Now I see it's about my kids smiling and happy. Things I owe overlooked when I was too caught up in rugby league. It's hard to feel anything but, you know, understanding and sympathy for Danny, uh, for um, Rangy Chase, when you read that, isn't it? Definitely, yeah. I mean, he obviously is opening up to some of it being his own fault. Mm-hmm. He, he's caused these, he's caused a lot of these problems, obviously, with the lifestyle and the maybe the, the ego or, or what have you that he was carrying on with, but mm-hmm. um, it, sometimes life isn't great and you know, you get to a point, and as long at least he's got to a point, he's realised that he's doing something about it, and he's yeah. taking the time to address things for himself. So you got to respect him for that, Definitely. Um, at least. Yes. Definitely. Okay. He'll be back in rugby league. I, I'm certain of it. I suspect. At some in some fashion, he might yeah. decide that he gets a job. You know, involved in the sport in in some way, involved with conditioning or something like that. No, I, I suppose I'm actually whatever whatever suits him, whatever decision he comes to. Some sort of um, semi-pro position. I think would would maybe suit him. It would have the less less pressure on it, less training rigors. Mm. He would be able to have a, a normal job as well and spend more time with his family. Yeah, I've heard know. that. I've heard that life in Canada is uh, is is remarkable. I, I don't think he wants to uproot and move his family. Perhaps not. If he, strugg- <laughs> if he struggled when, 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 between Salford and Castleford, I think he'd struggle between Toronto I'm and Castleford. Reasonably <laughs> sure he'd take him to Toronto. Anyway, okay. Well, good luck. Good luck to uh, good luck. Good luck to Rangie Chase. Yeah. And it's, yeah. Danny Kerman has extended his contract with the Wakefield Trinity Wildcats, which keeps him at the club until the end of 2018. The 30 year old has made over 100 Super League appearances for the Wildcats following an initial loan spell with the club in 2010 and has put pen to paper on a new two year extension. Yet more Wakefield Trinity Wildcats getting their business done early, Mark. Yeah, Brian Davies, Wakefield fan, got in touch, said excellent news for Trin. Um, I, I would add to that, I think it's a good deal for player and club. I think he's probably worth more to Wakefield than he is to any other club out there, yeah. which means it, it's a good fit for them to mm. get a deal sorted. Yeah, definitely. Ben Westwood has signed a new one-year contract with Warrington until the end of November 2017. The 34-year-old joined the Wolves in 2002, experiencing the club's move from Wilderspool to the Halliwell Jones Stadium uh, just a few years later. He is the longest-serving player in the current Warrington squad and a personal favourite of yours, Mark. I again think that he's worth a lot more to Warrington than he is to anyone else because of that longer serving aspect. Mm. I, I would suggest um, he he can teach the young kids who are all flair and skill and good line running how to be filthy little grubby bastards who punch halfbacks when they're on the floor. There you go. Yeah, and we don't like teams who have players who punch halfbacks or hookers when they're on the floor, do we? Mark? That's a good point. We all, all right. <laughs> Huddersfield, thank you. Huddersfield halfback, get back in your box. Huddersfield halfback Jamie Ellis has committed to the club, signing a new contract until the but end. But I've of got a proper oh, bat. For fuck's sake. I've got a proper bat at least. Yeah, yeah, he was a proper bat. He took his bat. Yeah, well, right. he did play for England, did he? So we couldn't lie. You know, it wasn't a risk for the <laughs> fucking <laughs> useless lump <laughs> of shit to not play in the <laughs> World Cup, was it? It was after the World Cup. All right, I'll take, your it point. Was I'll take your point. It was in the grand yeah, final. Right, he got a fucking right. pony one match you're back right, right. to mean that, that he missed the embarrassment against Italy but managed to face, well, yeah, you're right. play shit for the rest of the tournament. You're right, you're right. Poor old Ben Flower. No, no, Ben Flower was a different match. <laughs> well, we should, why are we doing this? Well, why are we doing this? It was wrong, it's he got a proper <laughs> suspension, Thomas. He got a proper <laughs> suspension. You can't even look at me. Right, let's stop because this isn't going to help shorten this massive podcast down. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right I, sh- I-, I should have thought I think I'd, yeah. I mentioned yeah, there you grubby go. Was. okay right we've all got grubby players in our teams I think it's fair to say oh yeah Huddersfield halfback Jamie Ellis has committed to the club for, uh, signing a contract extension until the end of 2019 the 26 year old joined the club from Castle for Tigers in 2015 and has scored 11 tries and 21 goals Huddersfield Giants have also revealed that Sam Wood has signed an extension to his current contract at the club. The 18-year-old centre or back rower uh, should now stay at the Giants until at least the end of 2018 as well. So congratulations to business, both yeah. of them. Catalan's halfback Richie Myler will miss the next six weeks with a groin injury. Myler has been in solid form since joining the Dragons from Warrington, scoring seven tries and recording nine try assists in 13 appearances. So that will be a miss for 
Catalan. It's been sneakily good, Myler, hasn't he, at Catalan? Yeah, and sneakily right. consistent. And like like uh, Alan said last week, you're sort of forgetting when you think about half-back op- options for England. Yeah. And this, this might damage his prospects a little bit in that regard. That's it. Okay, Castleford have loaned prop Ryan Ball to Halifax for the remainder of the 2016 season. Uh, second round, Kurt Haggard. <laughs> what? His Twitter handle, is it still Boyle Mags? <laughs> oh no, is it really? I didn't he used, know. That's he used am- to be Boyle Mags. That's amazing. Yeah. Every, set, every credit. Um, okay, second round, Kurt Haggerty has signed a new deal, tying him to Bradford until the end of 2018. The 27-year-old joined the Bulls in November and has scored two tries in his eight appearances. Robbie Ward has signed on at Featherston for the rest of the season. The former Leeds hooker returned from a brief stint uh, down under with the Sunshine Coast Falcons in the Inter-Trust Cup after struggling to find work down under. Interesting. Uh, that's called a bar, Robbie. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> People still bearing them. Uh, London Broncos have confirmed that Academy and Scholarship graduate Sadiq Adibai uh, has sat. <laughs> what? Yeah. Adibai. Sadiq Adibai. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll just love the way you said it. I had to read it and make yeah. sure I got it right. Obviously, you've never heard of him then. Sadiq Adibai? No. <laughs> Is he related to. Adi Adibai. Adi Adibai or? No, probably not. Uh, has sat... Have you ever heard of him? I have, yeah. Is he the lad that signed that new two-year deal? He's a, he's a young academy captain, I think, for the Broncos last year, and uh, he started playing for the first team a couple of times this year. Excellent. Well, we'll see if you're right, won't we? Uh, <laughs> academy graduate Sadiq Adibayi has signed a two-year deal. He will link up with the first team scoring in 2017. The 19-year-old prop currently captains the academy team at the Broncos and has featured for the first team this season too. So there you go. Um, London also can... <laughs> fuck a <laughs> tramp. <laughs> <laughs> London also confirmed that Api Puharangi has signed. Thank you, has signed a contract with the club until the end of 2017. Is it per, 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 Puharangi? Yeah, something like that. That's what I said, Puharangi. Anyway, good, good work. Thank you. Uh, well, I've lost my place now. Puharangi has signed a contract with the club until the end of 2017, just two weeks after his four-week trial period. Puharangi thoroughly impressed on his debut, making his first appearance during London's 62 points to 4 thrashing of Whitehaven, scoring two tries and winning man of the match. An ex Parramatta eel and New Zealand warrior standoff or centre, the 24-year-old New Zealand native holds an Irish passport. Of course he does. Uh, having previously represented Ireland at the 2013 World Cup and joined Brisbane, uh, sorry, joined the Broncos from Connacht Rugby Union in the Pro 12. This isn't the most ridiculous um, passport story. No, it week, certainly isn't, is, is it, it? Ben Teo? <laughs> that proud Englishman. I don't understand. Ben Teo. I, it doesn't. All the articles I read don't even ex- explain how he's got an English passport. Because <laughs> it's you, you know. Don't, don't, don't worry about that. Don't, don't worry about that. He plays he's, he's played for England. He's not even played in England yet. No, it's rugby. No, I thought he played for Worcester. That, that's oh, from next season. Yeah. Worcester, isn't he? He's at, he's at Le- Le- Ulster. Leinster. Leinster. One of that's them. That's right. He is at Leinster because I saw him on TV. I was looking through on Friday night. Yeah, Ben Teo, England, England international. That's by the by, but what a load of bullshit that seems to be. Absolute fucking ridiculous, isn't it? Right, okay. Uh, And finally, some positive international news. After a 10 year hiatus, the Mediterranean Cup has been resurrected by the Italian and Lebanese rugby leagues. The teams will play in a one off match on the 11th of June in Catania, which is in Sicily, and at the the Centro Universitario Sportivo Cittadello del Sporto uh, in an. Thank you. In an agreement reached by the two federations, principally domestic league players will be used. Also, following the success of... So, European venues, tick. Yes. African names, cross. There you go. What? African names, cross? Adebayi. Sadiq Adebayi. I said it pretty well the first time out. Anyway, let's let's roll on. Right, okay. Uh... <laughs> Following the success of their meetings in the Rugby League World Qualifiers last season, which saw Brian McDermott's USA make the finals in 2017, Canada, Jamaica and the United States have unveiled a new tournament, the Rugby League America's Cup. Uh, The nations will play each other to determine the champion of the region at venues in Philadelphia and Toronto. Uh, Canada will play Jamaica on July the 16th at 3pm in Levitown, Pennsylvania. Uh, USA will play the Jamaicans on July the 23rd at 7pm in Conshohocken in Philadelphia. Yeah. Conshohocken. Yeah. 
There you go. I think Concho Hogan, yeah. Concho Hogan. Yeah, in, we'll uh, in, in Philadelphia, in the United States. And uh, Canada will take on the US on September the 24th at 7 pm in Toronto, and that's in Canada. Uh, for more on the growing international scene, check out the League Culture, our friend at League Culture's monthly podcast. Yeah, they should have a new one up probably next week, yeah. um, but last month's is still up if you want to listen to that. They've got some German and some Holland stuff on last month, so. There you are. Fantastic. Yeah. Or right. ne- Netherlands, sorry. It's, well, it could be from Holland as well. There's a difference, though, isn't there? Yeah. All Nether- all people from Holland are from the Netherlands, but not all people from the Netherlands are from Holland. There you go. It's all to do with William of Orange. Oh, I thought it had something to do with Captain Hawk, but... Um... No, that's the Nether Netherlands. Very good. Uh, right, okay. We, right, seriously, that's the longest ever news section from around the world of rugby league, well and truly taken care of. Let's take a look now at Magic Weekend. Right, so, round 15 of Super League, and it was the competition's annual away day, Mark, up at Newcastle for the second year on the trot. Despite forecasts of dodgy weather, it was uh, it was pretty glorious, uh, certainly on the first day, and it, it held its own on the second day as well, didn't it? And it seems like it was a very successful event, all told, really, doesn't it's it? Newcastle, it's magic weekend, even if it was chucking it down or even snowing, oh, fans would have the shirts off swinging That's around it. their heads at one end of the stadium or the other. Did you see the tweet that was going around? I think it was um, serious about RL that put it out, and it was from someone that said, basically, if you're, it, man, I get, might be getting the names wrong here, but if, it was along the lines of, if your name's Gareth and your Mrs. Danielle's on her end do, don't marry her, she's shagging my mate in a travel lodge. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's not rugby league related, but it was obviously come out of the uh, you know it obviously hit the rugby league sphere at Newcastle. So yeah, well I, you saw some Hindus in the crowd and all that sort of stuff yeah. as well as every kind I'm of. Nothing, all the really. fancy dress, everything that's going on there. It's, it's a wonderful weekend, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I'm just disappointed we didn't see any SLP jerseys. Yeah, no, no pictures. No. I did see some pictures of Brad Davies and Mrs. Davies again. Yeah, enjoying two pint pints. Two pint pints. They, uh, they were celebrating Wakefield's victory. More of that later. But they were celebrating uh, Wakefield's victory with a two pint pint each. Brilliant. So uh, fair play to them. But before we get to Wakefield, uh, it was Salford and Witness who kicked off the weekend. Mark, um, both sides a little bit patched up, really. Um, what do you recall from this one? Well, they finished eighteen twelve, didn't they? But it was twelve four to the Vikings at half time. That's right. Um, I think, or 10 4. It was, they were ahead at half time. Witness were winning at half time, yeah. Um, what I remember of, of it is I was actually quite entertained when Witness were winning mm. because they were, they were starting to get back to some decent attacking rugby. Yeah. Um, and Salford, for their credit, were working really hard, on, particularly around the goal line and defence, and just about scrambling to, to stop the breaks coming to anything for Witness. Yeah. Um, when Salford were on top it was it was kind of a different story it was much more methodical kicking game and power game yeah. i mean their wingers are almost like second and third well fourth extra prop forwards shall yes. we say yeah um, and they have a little bit of size in the centers as well especially after young bibby went off and jones Moving sat with the centers, centers. yeah <laughs> it just became a monster monster team yeah um so, and with Dobson just kicking where he wanted to off the back of that in the second half, yeah. it really moved the pieces around. Yeah. And Salford did well to win the game. Yeah. It and kind of became less enjoyable to watch yeah. as a spectacle, but impressive nonetheless what Salford were able to manage in that second half. Yeah, correct me, Dobson really. He, um, he, he marshaled that side. They, they built a platform and he just he played behind that solid solid front row didn't he in the second half and that's that's what got Salford over the line it was uh, yeah it was, it was a good it was an interesting tie to, to start the weekend off wasn't it certainly yeah um, so what did the stats tell us about this one well it was quite tight on the metres numbers mm. which normally are a big indicator on which way a game will go uh, witness created more chances they made seven breaks to Salford's four but um, but with two fewer errors and a three percent better team tackle success they were crucial for Salford as they edged this one there you go. Uh, Daniel Vito, um, two tries, 144 metres. Justin Carney on the other wing, one try and 182 metres set the uh, 
set the momentum going for the Red Devils. Craig Koptak with 48 tackles and 118 metres went both ways. Mm-hmm. And Josh Jones with a try assist and 113 metres did his job too. I think it's also important to remember what a Judas bastard Craig Koptak is. Well, you, you like to point these things out. I do. Um, Lloyd Bar- Witness then. Lloyd White with 124 metres, um, 